and uh, we'll go around to the front, check it out. Really happy with how it turned out. What's going on guys? I have a 30 year old chain link fence that uh, still doing its job, you know, keeping dogs in or out, but this doesn't look that good from the road and uh, eventually we do want to sell this house so we're trying to up the curb appeal a little bit and my neighbor next door is redoing his fence one piece at a time and uh, it's just really looking better than our yard right now with this old chain link uh, but we're going to keep the majority of it the back and both sides but uh, we're going to go ahead and replace just the front here uh, like I said for curb appeal uh, with this new uh, eight, 8 foot wide by 6 feet high sections of fence that I just got from Lowe's uh, so I'm going to show y'all, I'm going to be taking apart uh, all the chain link sections here and uh, getting rid of this old gate, making a new one. But I'm actually going to keep these posts that are in the ground and uh, attach the new fence panels to it. So I'm going to show you how to do that. This is basically the uh, lazy way of uh, replacing your fence. I bought, you know, the already pre-made sections. I uh, got a decent deal on them. They're uh, on, on sale. So... Um, I'm going to show you kind of the issues I run into and uh, some easy tips to make this all work. Now the uh, fence panels are 8 foot wide but you can see we have some uneven, this is not 8 feet from here to there and uh, this is actually about 11 feet for the gate so we're going to have to make some tweaks here and there but uh, we're going to no, try to knock it out uh, for as cheap as possible. Currently we are at uh, $350. On materials and that was for eight um, eight foot panels uh, here they are right here I just got back from Lowe's with them we bought stain to stain uh, these things so they look a little better not as cheap and last longer uh, and we bought a brush for the stain we brought um, some brackets to mount the uh, wood panels on those chain link fence posts and uh, some screws for that and a few other little things here and there but Go ahead and I'll show you the other side of the fence and uh, then so you can see what it looks like when it's done. And hopefully this will be a nice and easy cheap project, but I'm not sure. This side should be a little easier because there's no gate and it's uh, pretty straightforward. But we'll see. Hopefully it, uh, it goes well and you can see my neighbor's fence is looking very nice compared to what I have here. So going to try to keep up with the Joneses here. Besides these fence panels, let me show you everything uh, that we just bought. We've got some stain here just to uh, help make it last longer with the teak. That's what my wife liked. Hopefully it'll look good once we actually get it on there. And then uh, we've got this brush applicator for that. Never put stain on a fence before, so we'll see uh, how that goes. And then I have 20 of these uh, there's actually two per bag. Uh, this is what, how I'm actually going to attach the wood fence to the chain link post. Just a little two inch round section there. Um, and you can screw into the wood here after it wraps down the pole. So I'm going to check the fitment on those real quick. Uh, and then we also have some large wood screws to uh, fill in those big holes on those loops and uh, hopefully be sturdy enough to hold this bigger fence. So that's uh, about everything. I'm gonna go check, make sure that all fits. If y'all have any questions about my uh, old work truck here, check out my Grappaholics YouTube channel. The one you're on right now is um, the one I started back in high school with my old truck and uh, all my truck related videos are kinda now focused on Grappaholics, but um, I'm gonna try to do more helpful tips on just life things that I do on this channel so please subscribe to either one and uh, check out my future videos let's get started I'm gonna start by checking to make sure that these two inch loops fit around here I think that will do the trick and then also just removing all these little twisted on metal fasteners there so we can get the chain link off and we're also gonna have to remove these little bolts here that hold on the frame at the end there's uh, two of those, and that should let the chain fall away. And we're going to remove these top pieces here so that we just have the post.
posts left to hold up our new fence. And I'm just going to use an adjustable wrench on these guys here. Just everybody should have an adjustable wrench laying around somewhere just to make this super user friendly. Just show how easy it can be to get rid of this old chain link. These are pretty simple. It's round, but it actually has a square fitting there, so it locks in to this little clip. And uh, you can easily turn it without having to hold it because it doesn't spin. So throwing everything in our bucket here, you can see we got about halfway done. I'll take this other one off, and we should have a big portion of this fence free to remove and just leave the post laying there. Now we've taken everything off of holding the fence up and uh, it's just being held by these vines and the fact that it's still kind of in the dirt but should be able to just pull it out now and uh, we can start removing these top pieces here. Well, that was pretty easy. There we go, that's one more step done. So the fence is free now, but it's stuck in the ground pretty well, and uh, I could pull on it and get a little bit at a time out of it, but uh, I'm just going to use the car, make this easier on myself. The truck would be a little bit overkill for yanking this thing out, so I'm just going to pull on it a little bit at a time with uh, my wife's car here. I think we've got everything disconnected from this side. Oh, it looks like there's one guy left here, barely hanging on. Look at that. And then we got one little bolt trying to hold on here. We'll just have to yank all the weeds out and uh, get that rolled up and out of the way. Then we can take this bent up top pole off of here. We've got our fence panels just loosely propped up against the poles and uh, with the way the chain link fence poles are spaced out we have a little bit of a gap here and I think we're going to put a gate here actually to get the mower through and uh, just so you don't have to walk around the house to get uh, to the front yard so we're going to try to work it out here by cutting this uh, overhang off and uh, piecing together a little fence, a little gate right here. But well, we're going to get started with attaching uh, these two that are spaced properly. So we've, uh, in order to get a little bit of gap here so they're not just resting on the ground, uh, we just took this piece of wood block that conveniently already had a cut out in it. And uh, that gives us like three inches off the ground here. And uh, we're using that to kind of prop it up. Then we checked uh, that it was level. It'd be better with a longer level, but we just, uh, Use this little guy here, make sure the bubble's in the middle. Looked at it from all angles, made sure it looked good. And uh, then we're using our little retainers here to screw in with these big hefty wood screws right to this pole that already existed. And uh, let's try it out. Let's see. There we 
go. So that's uh, going to keep it from falling over and pretty simple way to attach wood fence to a chain link. Let's keep going with the rest of them and see how it turns out. All right, we got the uh, first post attached to the first fence panel and uh, it's a little bit of a tight squeeze here with this the way it was so far away from it and I actually like that because it seems to really be squeezing it and I think it's going to hold it up off the ground when we remove our spacer here so I'm going to get some smaller ones for the rest of these so that it's a tight fit on them as well and we're also going to get a couple of little brackets to go from here to the next fence panel so that uh, they're holding each other up uh, since this one doesn't quite reach the post here so we're gonna have this panel attached to these two posts and then uh, it attached to this panel so that they're supporting each other and hopefully we can make that work and we'll figure out this side and how much overhang we're gonna have so that we can cut it accordingly and make a gate right here to get the mower through. So we got the first two panels put up. Uh, we used the level and uh, these bricks and this piece of wood spacer here to get the right uh, height that we wanted and uh, make sure it was level all the way across with the uneven ground here. And I went and got the smaller. These are inch and a half clamps here, whereas these are two inch clamps for this bigger post. And uh, them being slightly too small helps because they have to bend and be sucked up tight to the fence and that's going to keep them from falling and sliding down when you take the bricks out but that's uh the first part i think i'm going to use these same brackets to connect um the two pieces of the gate once i cut the end off but let's take a look at it from the front Very satisfied with it so far. We'll see how the rest of it goes. So now that I've got the first two pieces in place here and I've measured my lawnmower and uh, just basing off of what you would typically need to go through a gate, I decided to make uh, this gate about 54 inches wide, which is pretty wide, but uh, you know, I think it'd be nice being able to drive a four wheeler or lawnmower through it. So I went ahead and cut a section off. This is a 54 inch wide section here. And I bought these hinges from Home Depot that uh, looked pretty nice. It was a good deal for two of them, and it already comes with some pretty beefy screws. So I'm going to get this all set up and uh, level so I can attach it. And then a full 8-foot section will be going right here uh, with this pole in the middle to support it. And then um, starting here, we'll have another 8-foot section and I'll cut off the excess here, which will be getting used on the other side of the fence with uh, this piece that I cut off here. That's actually gonna fit pretty well in uh, one of the spots over there. Alright, we got the latches on, two bolts here going into the uh, stringer, and then three on the gate side, top and bottom, and I've got it right in front of this pole here for the most support possible with uh, the limited poles that we have. Let's see if it stays level uh, when we take these bricks out from under it. 
we have a functioning gate. Might be a little crooked on the uh, bracket there, but I think uh, not too bad. Our ground's pretty unlevel, but it opens. I'm happy with it. We just attached this uh, whole eight foot piece. You can see the gate coming open there without a latch. We got this eight foot section attached to this one post. We uh, made sure it was level and uh, propped it up accordingly. Now we have this remaining gap and one whole eight foot section to fill it. So we're gonna have to cut it short, uh, measured it out, I'll just have to get it level and at the same height as the rest of it and attach it here and then brace it right here like we did with the other side. So for the sake of uh, making sure this is all perfect and level here, we're going to go ahead and attach it uh, to this one. So we've got one here in the middle and then we're just going to have it all lined up perfectly and uh, it's level. We're going to attach another one of these brackets here and then we can secure it to the post there. Get this one down here. All right, and then we'll go ahead and put the other two screws to make sure it's nice and tight there, and then we can worry about clamping it down here. All right, last piece of the puzzle putting this latch on. Uh, we're putting it on the inside so that we can just get to it from the backyard instead of uh, just anybody coming in from the front. Screw. There we go. This side's done. That's pretty good. Let's go through the gate and check it out from the front. Some of these pieces of wood are wetter than the rest because it rained and some of them are laying down and some are propped up. But uh, once this dries out, we're going to stain it and of course we're going to finish the other side as well. We've got to get started on that, but super happy with this so far. It's been very, very painless process and it uh, looks really good for how cheap it is. With the first side complete, we went ahead, moved over to the other side of the house. It's a little bit more challenging, but still the same process. We had to lift it a good bit on this far side because of uh, how much the ground sloped plus the uh, roots of the tree, but we got it all the same height. And now we're just gonna have to fill in at the bottom there. And we've got the gate made. I'm about to put on a third set of hinges so that it has a little bit more support. And I believe I mentioned I got these at Home Depot. It's like $14 for a set of two. So we got two here, and two there. We're gonna put another set in the middle on each side and then also some handles on here. And then I still wanna figure out, I'm either gonna put wheels on the bottom or 
uh, some kind of support for the whole thing but as you can see it opens pretty well and it has it's high enough it clears the roots in the driveway got the other two hinges installed looks pretty uh, clean I was worried it would be a little too busy but I think that looks really nice and sturdy without being too much now we're about to put uh, two handles here on the gate and I uh, will be pretty much done and we're gonna stain it we've already started staining the back I'll uh, let you see how that looks with our first coat We started by staining this back portion, the first part that we completed. And now we'll go around to the front, check it out. Really happy with how it turned out. It's a little bit uh, of a challenge staining it at first, but we got it figured out, and I think it really adds a lot to the appearance of the yard and here's what the other side looks like I've um, just got some bricks sitting there for now until I decide if I want to put a wheel on it or what I want to do to keep it from sagging but right now everything's straight and stained We've got all our hinges installed handles latches a lot of shadows so it kinda looks different in different spots but really happy with how it came out let me know what you guys think of this fence and uh, if any of this helped you thank you for watching